I, I remember during uh, Streetcar Named Desire rehearsals, you, you gave us those big talks about dedication and everything. And then you were like, oh guys, I have to be, uh, we have to cut rehearsal short today because I have a medical. <laughs> you realize that yoga doesn't count as medical appointments. <laughs> Neither do group massages. <laughs> but, um, you know, one thing I will always remember about you would be the great political discussions we had in your life. <laughs> um, I haven't met a lot of union workers who teach drama that are as conservative as you are, but it's an interesting combination because for a union, union worker, you're pretty against unions. And for being a drama teacher, you're, you're pretty much for cutting arts education. <laughs> You're probably also the only Mexican I know that's in favor of deporting illegal immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all agree, though, what really causes you the most stress in your life is those dreaded auditions where you have to make the tough choices and casting decisions. Like, I'll never forget Romeo and Juliet when you gave us that big speech about how we need a Romeo who's just sexy you can really get the crowd going. Then you cast a gauge. <laughs> and this is really awkward because he's not in the crowd and I'm making fun of him. <laughs> but you know what? You you always gave me some great roles, but in Streetcar, I just I really I really wanted Mitch. And I went up to you after I found out I didn't get the role and I said, What what could I have done in my audition better? And you said, you know, Alex, you just didn't look the part. Um, then you casted me as a middle-aged Mexican man. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that uh, Cappies uh, decide the show is based off of acting ability, not looks, right? But whatever. Um, you know, I, I ended up getting the role that I wanted anyway. Not, not Mitch, but uh, Steve, because my friend J.P. Bryan, who... Uh, Played, played the role, decided to uh, drop the show to accept a scholarship at NYU, even though he went to Columbia. Um, but even though JP dropped the show, I thought it was really nice that you decided to give him a role in the show afterwards anyway. The director. <laughs> and, and I'll always remember uh, auditions when he said, guys, we're casting the show based off of acting ability, not seniority. Then you casted all seniors. <laughs> but it's fine, I, I understand. Casting shows can be difficult. That's why you pick shows like Steel Magnolias, where, you know, they just sort of cast themselves. <laughs> and you just say, okay. Um, but anyway, you, you put on some great shows here at Sexton. Like, my, my favorite musical that you put on, Pale Pink Dragon. <laughs> include a dance for no apparent reason. And you put on some great comedies too. Like The Crucible. <laughs> but anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, thank you, Sexton. We love you. Have a great night. I wish I could get better photos from this. It's on his phone, look at him, the tech-savvy tech man.
<laughs> I was told to go up and say a couple of nice words about the uh, retiree. You look good. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got for nice stuff. Oh, God. I didn't know I I am So, so what a year with retirement. It seemed to be the theme, you know, with Regis Philbin going. Um, George Lucas, Patty Sexton. <laughs> <laughs> It was an easy decision for her, but when Larry King announced his retirement, Sexton said to herself, if my son's retiring before me, I gotta get out of the game. <laughs> yes, Patty has had a very long career and has worked with some truly amazing people. Ray Woods, Rob Rigg, William Shakespeare. <laughs> and it's no secret out of her long career of teaching, that I was her favorite. <laughs> but being Sexton's favorite is like smoking pot. It doesn't look good on a college resume. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. If people in the audience knew me and how, uh, then they know it was no secret that I wanted to take Patty's job when she retired. What some of you guys don't know is that I got an interview. So I showed up and they told me. To become the next Patty Sexton, I had to fill out some requirements. Let me read some of those requirements for you. Number one, I'm to show up in class no earlier than 10 minutes after the bell rings for class. <laughs> Number two, call students by the wrong name, always. <laughs> Number three, cast kids whose parents donate the most money. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, gossip about students to other students. <laughs> Hit students if they step out of line. Number six, if you get caught hitting the kids, deny it. <laughs> and number seven, it only casts seniors in place. Unfortunately, I didn't get the job. I know I'm heartbroken about it. I know you guys all are too. But back to the person for the hour. Uh, I've made my jokes, so now let me get serious for a minute. Patty, you have a huge heart. I don't, I don't metaphorically mean that. I literally mean that you have a huge heart. We are all worried about you. <laughs> but back to the, uh, I'm actually going to get serious for a minute. And I'm sorry I'm shaking and whatnot. If you guys can't hear me, just give me a minute. I went to New York last week and I met one of, uh, I met Matt uh, D'Amico, an old student of Patty uh, Sexton, and he was starring on Broadway in Peter and the Starcatcher, and I had a chance to talk to him after the show, and he only had the nicest things to say about you, how great a mentor you were, and how great of a teacher, and how great, you, how great you are. Only the nicest things to say about you. <laughs> then I thought about the students that Patty has had. So many of them have gone to do such great things. Touring the country, teaching, and starring on Broadway. Obvious Pat Patty Sexton has done something right. During my four years at Danny Hills High School, I had Miss Sex as a teacher. And during those four years, she became more something more, a great mentor and friend. Patty, you are such a great person. You put up with so much, and you don't get nearly as much respect as you deserve. Never once did Miss Sexton ever say something wasn't going to happen. She always stuck it out, except for that one time. Somebody thought it was getting a new theater or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Patty's always been there for guidance. At the end of my junior year, I was in a room after a performance on the verge of crying and wanting to quit the social program and quit acting forever. Miss Sexton walked in the room, and I remember, I remember what she told me. She told
tell me that I was so dedicated and I worked very hard that he said I have to work through the hard times too. Students in high school have role models like famous movie stars, singers, and performers. All four years, you've been my role model. You're who I look up to. I know, I, I know you'll always be there for me. And if I only had two words left to say to you, it'd be thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you.